going back to going back to your mom uh, when you're talking about on the conservative side do, do you, your recent positioning with Trump has yes. been has got has gotten a lot of people a little bit mm-hmm. uh, uh, asking questions sure okay so hey you know the Democrats what you're doing you know uh, trying to uh, undermine everything this man's doing it's yeah. not working you know you're yeah. kind of going through the whole process and he kind of Biden all this stuff what, what, what do you think uh, you know the strategy that they're doing right now do you do you think they don't know that it's not working or do you think they're convinced it's going to end up working come November 5th with the day we woke I think they're convinced it's going to work and I think that they're leaning on the 2022 midterms to buffer their point um, you had certain Democrats who were supporting uh, Trump surrogates. I'm sorry, they were they were supporting these folks uh, and favoring yeah Trump surrogates during the 2022 um, midterms, and people were anticipating a red wave that never arrived. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so that's what they're thinking about. The more we put Trump out there, the more we put Trump out there, the more we buffer support and, and augment support for these folks who support him, ultimately it will lead to our victory. That's how they're thinking. And I'm saying, no, not what I'm seeing. I think that he has damn near a cult following. I'm not calling folks cults or anything like that. I'm just talking, I'm just speaking metaphorically about how these folks are in terms of their love, their devotion, their belief in him. And they're not going anywhere. And then you got Hispanics who are supporting him now, according to the polls. You've got more black folks who are supporting him now, according to the polls. And even though they're swearing that the overturning of Roe v. Wade, along with some of the charges that have been executed against them, that that's going to turn off white women Well, we ain't seeing that evidence. And so I'm looking at it from that standpoint, and I'm like, well, wait a minute now. Are y'all not paying attention? Because let me tell you something. Charlemagne the God said it best when he said, Joe Biden is not inspiring at all. Um, You almost get the impression that the Democrats who are pushing for Joe Biden to get four more years— Because that's what they were chanting at the State of the Union address. Four more years, four more Mm -hmm. years. The man's going to be 82 in November and you you chant for four more years. But you've got progressive leftists on this side chanting for four more years. I don't know if they know how embarrassing that is. Okay, okay, but that's neither here nor there. The point is, is that when you're doing that, I'm looking at them and I'm saying to myself, come on now. This is utterly ridiculous. You think this is going to get it done. But I tell you what I'm starting to suspect. They don't know if Joe's going to last four more years. And all they care about is that he gets through Election Day and the inauguration. And then after that, who's the next line in line? It's Kamala Harris. And I think that's how folks are thinking. But my problem with it is, again, we're capitalists. We like competition. What happened to competing with him and winning? What's all the lawfare about? One charge after another. You got Letitia James and a New York Attorney General in in in, in New York. You've got you, you you got the folks in Georgia with Fannie Willis and others. You've got you know Mar-a-Lago situation. You got a, I mean we're really 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 going to have a trial about hush money to a former porn star. That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing now. I'm like, <laughs> can, are you kidding me? Now don't get me wrong. I'm not advocating that anybody should be above the law at any time. What I am saying is he's the president of the United States, the former president of the United States. You talk to us about Russian collusion. You talk to us about a a, a bevy of things over the years. Man still running. Four, four, Four indictments, 91 counts, and the man gets more campaign dollars. Climbing in the polls, okay, And last time I checked, he still ain't been in cuffs. He still ain't been put behind bars. And he's the presumptive GOP nominee. You can't stop him. You cannot stop him. And so for me, I find myself ashamed of the Democratic Party for their lack of a competitive fervor. You had since 2016 to come up with somebody else. And you still can't do it. That is pathetic. It is pathetic. And it is no excuse for it whatsoever. It is 2024. In eight years, you should have been able to find somebody that can compete with this man other than a soon-to-be 82-year-old incumbent. Well, let me ask you this, though. Yes. 
do you want Democrats to win? <sighs> That's a tough question. That's for me. the question. Yeah. It is, it's, but it's totally fair, bro. I'm not going to yeah. run that question. It's totally fair. Um, I have to confess what most folks who sit before guys like yourself don't. It's hard to figure out. Like, for example, supposedly we've got a good economy. Unemployment is relatively decent, around 4%. You know, black unemployment, a little under 6%, about 5.6% if I remember correctly. Um, but then you listen to the right and it's like, what about inflation? And then you're driving in California and you're paying an arm and a leg for gas. You go into the supermarket, you buy some milk, you buy some bread, whatever. Because, see, contrary to what po folks believe, I actually do go to the supermarket. <laughs> you okay? I do buy my own stuff. You know, all of this other stuff. I'm like, you're watching and you're seeing all of this stuff. And it's like, who's telling the truth? Do we have a good economy or not? Is it really a crisis at the border or not? I believe it is. Yeah. Do you, uh, you know, is inflation a real thing? Is it imaginary? You're looking at all of these different things. You're talking about national security, the war in Ukraine. Should we support them? Should we give them more money than we've already given them? You're looking at the, you know, Israeli, uh, you know, Hamas conflict. I call it the Israeli Hamas conflict as opposed to the Israeli Palestinian conflict. You know, but I don't touch that because I don't know enough. And that's not my lane. But I also find myself, okay, well, we, we, we've got folks here saying, Stop this, stop this, stop the bombing, stop all of this. And then you have other folks like, hell with that. Hamas has to be eliminated because look at what they've done. October 7th and the kidnapping and 130. You, you, you're hearing all of this. And you read the different publications. I'll read the Washington Post one minute. I'll read the New York Times the next. I'll read Wall Street Journal the next. I'm, I'm watching the channels, Fox News, MSNBC, CNN. I'm going back and forth. And literally, we've changed as a society we can take the same information and put a completely different twist on it yeah. to make it look like who's right is wrong. Somebody as knowledgeable as you guys have proven to be mm -hmm. with no more than me at this moment in time. I'm studying more and more and more of it every day mm -hmm. because I'm fixated on it just like I am with sports. But I'm saying if you tell me what is definitively true, that's undeniable. I can tell you how I feel. My problem is, is that I literally could be sitting in front of one person on the left with the same exact information that I'm sitting in front of somebody 15 minutes later with on the right. And they have two completely different versions. And I think that's why America is so lost. Because folks are confused. They don't have time when you're out there hustling and bustling and trying to take care of your family, pay mortgages, maintain or elevate your quality of life. You don't have time to study everything that needs to be studied. You've got congressional and Senate figures telling you they signed bills they didn't even read. Literally. I've seen them on tape doing this. And so when you have that going on, it's really, really difficult to say, oh, I know this. But if you tell me, these are the facts, Stephen, beyond a shadow of a doubt. I don't give a damn what it is. I can tell you how I feel about it. I can do that. Yeah. You know, it's, it's interesting you say that. And, and thank you for being, you know, straight up with it. That's the one thing about you that why I relate and I like watching you because you, you're straight up. I'll watch and you'll say, yeah, I'll see you're, you're defending Magic Johnson one time. I'm like, this guy's my friend. I'm like, okay, he's sometimes easier to Magic than he is to somebody else, mm -hmm. to all this stuff. But I love the fact that you're raw and you come out and give your feedback. Here's what it makes me think about. Mm -hmm. when, when asking about who you want to vote and who do I believe, do I go with the guy on the left or the guy on the right? You ever had a guy in the NBA or sports that we all criticized? Mm -hmm. And the media went after him. So everybody's like, what a freaking guy, you know, piece of this and da 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 Seven years later, like, dude, that guy was mistreated by everybody. Right. What was that all about, right? And you're like, dude, no, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. I'm, listen, I'm not with you, man. I'm over here. Mm -hmm. I'm on this guy's side. I don't like what you did. Mm -hmm. You know, the truth is this. Right. So we can, we can look at a couple things with, you know, 2024 in a few different ways. What we have right now, Stephen A., that I think is easy to do mm -hmm. is two things. Mm -hmm. You actually have, for once, we haven't had this. You got two people we get to vote for that we got four years to choose from each. Mm -hmm. It's not a what if. Right. It's not a, well, if he, do you want somebody like Hillary mm -hmm. Clinton, do you want a man like mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. to have access to the nuclear button? Right. 
I don't know if I do. Right. Well, guess what? You know he had it for right. four years. Right. What happened? Right. And you know this guy had it for four years. What happened? Mm-hmm. So it's actually very easy systematically to mm-hmm. sit there with data and say, they went after this guy. I was convinced he was tied to Russia. Right. $35 million Hillary Clinton. That was a lie. And everybody in the mainstream media was behind it. Everybody. CNN, mm-hmm. MSNBC. Mm-hmm. Guys, that's kind of shitty. And then right. you try to defame character. Then you went yes. after the girls. Then E. Jean right. Carroll, $83 million. Right. Anderson Cooper asks, was he? Did, did he rape you? Well, I think rape is more of a fantasy. What are you uh, talking about? Answer, we got to go to break, question. right? Answer the question. <laughs> answer the question. Yeah. 91 <laughs> different right. counts. Mar-a-Lago is only worth $18 million. Right. This is not that good. He thinks mm-hmm. it's someone. And then all of a sudden mm-hmm. CNN shows this week, well, Mar-a-Lago, if he was mm-hmm. to do a fire sale, he could sell it for $240 <laughs> right. million. Yeah. What mm-hmm. happened to the $18 million? Listen, all of these things are unfair, unfair, unfair. Right. And then this guy would go sit with anybody in any interview to any platform, to anybody, CNN, Fox, mm-hmm. CBS, mm-hmm. ABC, 60 Minutes. It didn't matter. The, this guy is a gamer, will go anywhere, right? And you go on the other side. No, no, no way. What did the, how many times did Obama go sit with Bill O'Reilly? One time. One time. How many times did Hillary Clinton? How many times? How many times do they, How many times has Biden been on Fox? How many times? Uh, I, how many times has Biden? Yeah. How, many, how many times have you interviewed uh, Hillary, uh, uh, Bill Clinton, uh, uh, Obama, or Joe Biden yourself? No, never. How's that possible? Well, you've never. interviewed McCain. So, so to me, when I watch some yeah. of this stuff, and you're on their side, like for, for the most part during that time. At that time. At that time. So Not you, now. But, go ahead. but then when you bring it today and you see what's right. going on, and... It, the confusing part for me is mm-hmm. like I'm a I, I you know my mom's side all Democrats they were right. communists my dad said they were imperialists so mm-hmm. it was a debate between the two where saying rich people are greedy and poor people are lazy so I had to kind of figure it out on my own to see where right. the reality was <laughs> today four years versus four years we got three Afghanistan screw up you know Ukraine and 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 you know Russia looks like we're going to have to give yep. these guys another Afghanistan of a couple trillion dollars of taxpayers yep. money that we keep sending money oh great right Israel Hamas okay mm-hmm. all right whether we know everything about the history of it or not how come this didn't happen 4 years ago how come there was nothing going on 4 years ago mm-hmm. so when you look at it that way what is happening a lot that I talk to guys who are uh, uh, celebrities influencers mm-hmm. yep. Hollywood TV somebody that you mm-hmm. watch there's a couple different camps. There's yeah. a one camp that is like, look, man, I'm still going to vote left. There's the other camp that says, dude, I'm not going to tell you who I'm voting mm-hmm. for, which is kind of like the middle. Like right. if you had that one interview with Denzel, yeah. who did you vote for? Yeah. It's none of your business. That's right. I don't know if you remember yeah. that interview. Yeah, I, I totally, I totally yeah. remember. Yeah. I don't blame him for that either because Hollywood's different. Exactly. Hollywood's I'm, different and they would hold him accountable in, a ways, in ways most others can't nor would. But, but here's the feeling I'm getting with you, sure. bro. The feeling I'm getting with you, which is why I'm kind of like enamored with like the journey you're going through. I'm just kind of following it. Right. Um, I think you got to fight. And, and I think, you know, mom's left certain values of pride and dad. And it's like, hey, dude, you got a job to protect this country that gave you this life. And right. I feel like there is something going on with you that's kind of like, you know, you want to talk. But, you know, it's kind of like. Am I really going to say this? Can I really say this? It's not that. It's not. It's just that I want to be as sure as you are. That's what I'm saying. I owe it to the audience. I owe it to the people to make sure that if I'm going to come out with fire and brimstone, I know what the hell I'm talking about. And sometimes when it comes to these issues, I don't. So I'm just being honest. Bro, about what would happen but, if you came but, out and you said, let's just say in okay. the month of October, okay. Stephen A came out. Okay. Let's be real here. Sure. You came out on your podcast, obviously not at the network you would, but on your podcast. You said, guys, I'm going to say something right now. You guys are going to be very upset at me. What happened if you in the month of October said I'm voting for Trump? What would happen? I'd be called a sellout and a coon by my own community. That would be automatic. That's exactly what they would say. But what I would tell you is to know something about me, I wouldn't give a damn. I'm not scared. I'll say what I feel. Let me tell you. Let me address the point that you made earlier. My belief is I'm going to vote for Biden. Now, you have to remember, it's how you're looking at the presidential election might be a little bit different than me. For example, I'm the kind of person that might vote for the president being a Democrat and every other position Republican. Every senator, every congressional figure, every local. In other words, because I view the presidency I understand it's the commander in chief. I get it. But I view and and listen, 
I will preface it by saying I'm open to correction. I truly am. I view the presidency as more of a statesmanship position. I would, if, if I interviewed Trump, I would look him in his face and tell him why. I would never, I'm not calling you a racist. I'm not saying that all of your policies were wrong. Hell, the economy was thriving before COVID. I remember. But you don't know how to act. You just, I said, you don't care what you say. You don't care about how divisive you come across. You don't have any sensitivity whatsoever to how you scare the living hell out of people with your rhetoric and with your, your aloof. I don't know if the word is aloofness or just a disregard for the importance of unity. I believe you believe in America. I believe in America. Let me tell you what I believe in about America. I believe that when we're together, nothing can stop us. Nothing. I don't care if it's a bad president. I don't care if it's bad people on Capitol Hill. I don't care if corporate America is garbage. I don't care if Wall Street's messing up. We will overcome anything when we're together. And I remember how I felt this way. And this is the only time I'm 56 years old. And it's the only time in my life I ever felt this way. 9-11 happens. And that first plane goes into the first mm -hmm. tower. And I'm laying in my bed. I'm in an apartment in South Jersey at the time before he was in New Jersey. I'm laying in my bed and I'm on the phone with one of my friends. And I'm like, see, this damn problem. The pilot's probably drunk. You know, see, see, this is what I'm talking about, right? I mean, who the hell knows? What? Well, this, this is why I worry about flying. I, and that's what I, I literally was reacting that way. And then the channel was on CNN. And I saw that second plane coming around. And I said, whoa, wait a minute. And we saw that plane come around and it hit that second tower. And the first words out of my mouth, excuse my language, is holy shit, we are under attack. And at that moment, it wasn't black, it wasn't white, it wasn't Latino. The United States mm -hmm. of America is under attack. You are after us. I didn't see anybody. That was an American citizen and thought about, I didn't think about race. I didn't think about div divisiveness. I didn't think about hostility. I didn't think about anything. We are under attack. I'm 56 years old. It's the only time I've ever felt like that in my life in this country. It's isn't the that, only time. Isn't that sad though, Stephen, that it, it, it has to take no. terrorists no. flying airplanes into buildings, killing thousands of Americans ready for us to go. I don't care that you're black. Right. I don't care. That is the saddest thing to hear. That's right. Because, and, then, and then, Steve, going back, if you don't mind, Patrick, I'm going to the fact that, that Trump's divisiveness. Let me ask you, Stephen. Sure. You're going for president. Mm -hmm. You're going to go run for president. As you come in, you don't even think you're going to win. You find out, Stephen, that the president before you was spying on you and your campaign. Think about this. Think about this. Spying on your campaign. Then the chick that you're running against paid all these millions to have this fake Russian thing. So by the way, your anger's building. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. Then the two impeachments. Then this 2020 FBI's at Twitter blocking all the stories from Hunter and everything. How was your, you, Stephen A. Smith, how was your attitude going to be? Are you going to be like my, this guy? My attitude is going to be probably stink. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to be furious. I'm going to be all of those things. Yes. But I also know what I signed up for. And I signed up to be a president to all the people not to come across as somebody who's only loyal to my constituency who put me in that office. Because you do have that with some politicians. Mm -hmm. They think about who got them there. And I understand when you're campaigning. Please don't get me wrong. Of I'm course. trying to get in the office, trying to maintain power. I get yep. that part. Yep. But what I'm saying is once you're there, mm -hmm. you got an obligation to be bigger than that. And when you find yourself, I remember I saw Cat Williams, the comedian, joking about this when he was doing a, a concert in Jacksonville. And he was like, Trump, Trump is coming. You know, he ain't playing games. And who did he go out? Kathy Griffin. You know, he's talking about Kathy. <laughs> yeah, like, Kathy Griffin. Yeah. You know, and I'm like, you just find yourself. It's like there, there comes a point in time where you elevate to a certain level in life where the pettiness has to go out the window because you, you got to remember. It's not just about what you do. It's about what you're convincing the American citizen you're doing. You can't scare the living hell out of people because that causes chaos, too. And what it does is it, can, it, it distracts us from the very good that you might be doing because we're caught up in all the noise you've created. And then, listen, I firmly believe, and I've said this publicly, 
They say 81 million plus people voted for Joe Biden. I don't believe that for one second. <laughs> I believe 81 plus million people voted against Donald Trump. They didn't want him there. They couldn't take it anymore because he was so unsettling. And that's the difference. Big boy, big rules. A lot of people might feel differently. Yeah. That's where I'm at with it. No, I, 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 I respect that. And I, I think a part of why, why would why would 81 million people feel that way? Let's let's go through what is the easiest emotion to mm -hmm. manipulate people with. Mm -hmm. What is the easiest emotion? It's very simple. Fear sharpens listening. Yep. If you can sell an entire congregation, mm -hmm. you go to you ever gone to a pastor? He gets up and he says, mm -hmm. "If you don't get baptized today, you're going to hell." <laughs> and here's what hell looks yeah, like. Oh my right. God, I'm getting baptized right now, right. Right? right? So they sold Trump as the second coming of the guy from Germany, mm -hmm. and many Americans mm -hmm. who don't read, mm -hmm. who don't follow politics, mm -hmm. who live a simple life, who these guys are trying to pay their bills. They're trying to watch a game on Sunday, mm -hmm. you know, maybe having a barbecue. You're right. trying to do basically. They don't have time to mm -hmm. go read all the stuff that's going on. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you know what? I don't want to deal with any of this stuff. The part that I give the left a lot of credit to mm -hmm. is the following. When COVID happened and everybody knew it came from China, mm -hmm. U.S. could have done what they did during 9-11 and been united against China, but U.S., the Democrats became united against Trump, and they did such a phenomenal job mm -hmm. putting all the blame on him, everything. Well, and by the way, check right. this out. Okay. You said uh, uh, vaccine played a big role in your life, right? I think in 2022 yes, or 2021, you said if it wasn't for vaccine, I wouldn't been here that's and all this stuff. That's what they told me. I said that's what the doctors told me, yeah. Fantastic. And, and so... Do you know when the vaccine was ready? Do you know when the vaccine was announced? I uh, think it, it was, was it was it was while Trump was there. No, it, it was two days right after, after election. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, weird. Exactly. But guess who got it done? He did. Trump got it done. Oh yeah. But they announced it only two days after election. Because right. imagine if they would announce it two days pre-election. Mm -hmm. Right, fastest ever. He would have credit for it. He would have gotten credit. Imagine if uh, right. uh, you know the the New York Post story would have stayed. Mm -hmm. Fifty intelligence well, officers came out signing, saying there's nothing in the laptop, mm -hmm. and then later on we found right. out there was plenty of things in That's the laptop. That's fair, but, but but you're bringing up what, what you're t you're talking about when you're talking about COVID, for example. That wasn't what was scaring a bunch of people. It was the riots in the streets. It was the mayhem. It was the fact that they went to the left, as you pointed out, went about the business Great strategy. of demonizing, uh -huh. the, demonizing Trump. Yeah. And to get to your point, you have a responsibility to be big enough to see that coming and to be more adroit in your approach towards resolving issues and making sure you highlight who you are. CNN was one of the ringleaders, one would say, when it came to their positions against Trump. Last time I checked, they weren't number one. That was Fox. Yeah, but that's not Fox said, I, 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 No, I, I, no, look. but you know, you, to, to give you the sure, example sure, of, of sure. basketball. Sure. Okay, so uh, I don't know. How many points uh, did Dominic Wilkins average mm -hmm. in a season when he right. was killing it? 35 right. points a game? I think Ridiculous. he had a 37-point right. season. Ridiculous. Of, <laughs> what did they do? They lost. They, they lost. Win. Right. And then when the, Pist have a team. when the Pistons won, I'm, who was averaging the most points on that Nobody. team? Well, 19 yeah, points a game, Prince, or was it who? Maybe Chauncey, Chauncey Phillips, Phillips, 21 Phillips, points. Rip, Hamil Rip Hamilton. Yeah, but Rip they didn't have Hamilton. Rip Hamilton's right. post, but it was right. like a 19, 18, 20, 21 point yes. game. They didn't have a 32. They didn't have a 28. They didn't right. have a 20. The point is this. Take a 21, mm -hmm. CNN. Mm -hmm. Take a 17, mm -hmm. MSNBC. Take a 16, mm -hmm. CBS. Right. Take any of that. All of that beats 40 points a game. That's Fox News. Okay. So the collective effort of everybody combined, mm -hmm. Fox is nothing. Okay, you can say that, but here's what I can. Here's what here's what my retort would be. You you have any idea the size of Mark Levin's audience? You have any idea about the size of Sean Hannity's audience? Not close. I mean, audience. I mean, I, I'm just saying. You turn Not around. Close. You look, and I understand. We 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 talk about the quote unquote liberal society that that we live in. I can't tell you how many people in my business I know for a fact ain't liberal. They can talk that nonsense all they want to. But when you see that, how they conduct themselves, when you see them in the office, I know. when you yeah. go up there, oh, they, ain't, they don't have yeah. those views. They don't have those views. I think that Trump lost the election more than the conservatives did. 
I think he, look, he alienated people because of his. Maybe. Name. I know, I know, first of all, I know of, I know a lot of Republicans, okay? And I know of Republicans who were flat out exhausted because he didn't know how to act. Now, I, listen, listen, you're a very successful businessman. Yeah. And I'm saying to you, it's perfectly understandable why you would feel different because, again, the world that you live in, you have to know more than most. And because you know more than most, the actual substance of his policies, how it works for our society compared to the left and stuff like that, you'll choose that. It's perfectly understandable. But I'm saying to you, here's what you would know, and this is what you're not— That's fair. This is what, this is what I think you need to give yourself credit for. You know, there's no way on earth you're this successful— if you don't have an idea of what your audience wants and what's to get, what to give them, Trump knew it and did it in 2016. He played the game. Hillary should have gone to Wisconsin. She should have gone to Pennsylvania. She should have gone a couple of places, places to campaign in the last few days. I don't want to hear uh, uh, about the FBI director ruining it for her. I'm quite, think, I'm quite sure it had something to do with it. But the point is, you got to go out there and campaign. Trump was everywhere. But I, he was everywhere. Yeah. He knew. And then in 2020, he thought, Hey, I'm the man. Yeah, I'm going to go out there and campaign and stuff like that. But I do what the hell I want to do because these damn people are getting on my nerves. And it cost him because he lost his way and he forgot about governing the whole as opposed to just the people who supported well, Guess what, Mr. Stephen A. Smith? Yes, sir. So remember when I said earlier, I said at 41, 42 years old. Yes, sir. You're going through that. And what was your answer? Yeah, I didn't know any better. <clears throat> because it was the first time ever you're going through that. Right. H doesn't matter. Right. So to him, this is the first time he's been a president. He's delivered an incredible economy to the country. Why are they turning against me? Well, I it's feel the first time he was president, but it wasn't the first time he campaigned. He campaigned in 2016. Campaign. So winning in 2016, this is four yeah. years later. I know. But, but, but from the perspective, I wrote a couple things down here. Right. So in, in uh, 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 running an insurance company, yeah. you know, I've been being in it for 20 some years. You know what it taught me a lot? It taught me a lot about human nature. Yeah. And, you know, you, you're like, I've never run a big company this size. Every year, I didn't run a company that size. So every year, I'm like, I've never run a company this size. I've never run a shit. Right. I'm dealing with all these different states, 49 states, a few hundred offices, 30,000 agents. You know, I've never, I'm comfortable with 20 agents, 50 agents, 100 agents. So every time you go into a new place, like, yeah. it's a new level, right? right? How do you handle it? Okay. And I learned one thing very quickly. The guys that were complaining and bitching and were the loudest, um, were able to convert more people into their way of thinking than the quiet guys that went and just got the job done. Yeah, okay. okay. So That's if, if we have to choose between the left and the right, mm -hmm. which ones are more professional complainers, it's the left. Mm -hmm. Complainers. I don't think the right has anybody that is as good as in complaining as AOC is. Mm -hmm. I don't think the right has anybody that's as good as complaining as you know, Bernie Sanders. Is. Right. I don't, Elizabeth Warren, professional. I can go on and on and on. Mm -hmm. to, like all oh, these rich people and these capitalists and all the look up and say, hey, should anybody be worth this kind of money? You know, yeah. or look at this guy, you guys, Walmart, Amazon, you guys should be paying $15 an hour minimum wage. How should these billionaires not pay 15 bucks an hour? Uh, hey bro, you, you, Bernie Sanders, you don't pay your employees 15 bucks an hour. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I, you, we're going to make that adjustment. Oh, so you're a hypocrite. Yeah. You want, okay, I totally. got you. No I'm problem. You. So no you're you're the millionaires and billionaires, right. and millionaires and billionaires. Then you become a millionaire. Now it's billionaires, mm -hmm. right? So I'm sorry, you're a millionaire now. So w when, when you watch all of that and you're, you're going through it himself, mm -hmm. credit to the left for making him and painting him out to be the enemy that he became. But by the I way- I can no longer remain in today's Democratic Party. Tulsi Gabbard says she is no longer a Democrat. A potential Tulsi Gabbard VP. Where we are being told that we just have to comply and go along with whatever they say. American people uh, are smarter than this. However, we must remain vigilant to recognize their propaganda for what it is, pure lie. Unfortunately, we live in a time where free speech is under attack. Whatever they say goes, and we, we have to just fall. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, you owe them an apology. <laughs> on a debate stage before I would look forward to doing that again. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.